The M4 MacBook Air is still on fire. And this is not a metaphor for how hot this thing gets on your lap. It's been a couple of months now and I have been doing 100% of my work on this computer, which means I've created trusts and lighting plans on AutoCAD for a building in New York City. I've begun an addiction to Minecraft and I've edited this many videos entirely on this M4 MacBook Air. And it's nutty, but I am completely sure now that this can act as a main video editing rig. And that's a surprise. And also it's now completely confirmed Two months later, I am no power user after all. We're at a point with the battery life now in these computers where I don't really ever plug this thing directly into the wall. Like, even when I'm at a production site and I'm working remotely, I just carry around one of these things, one of these kind of big battery backups. And for instance, this one holds more than a full laptop charge in it. And this is not an ad, I'm not shilling for Anchor. I actually have a bunch of these different big battery things and I love them all equally. But the battery inside the MacBook Air lasts long enough that one charge of its own battery plus a charge from one of these lets me have it on and use it for an entire day, easy. And then really, I mostly just charge my battery packs and then just keep using this thing off of these. Then when I'm at home, it's usually plugged into my studio display where it gets charged off of that. Because of the environments I keep finding myself in, this building, for instance, in New York City is kind of windows in kind of all directions. The screen brightness can be limiting here specifically, right here where I'm sitting now. I get it, that's a pretty niche concern because at home, obviously I have a lot more control over my environment. So this wouldn't matter to me at all there or to most regular people in most regular situations. It's not very often where you need to be sitting right next to an open sunny window. In fact, this is harsh lighting, this is bad. But like my MacBook Pro's screen can go, what, twice as bright? Solved my own problem. Where was I? What I'm saying, I guess, is that the screen is not dim by any means. It's just not so bright that you can use it easily and clearly in like direct sunlight, like you can with the MacBook Pros. But just don't do that anyway. The sun gives you cancer. I have run a gargantuan, I don't even know, maybe 400 gigabytes or something like that of video project files through this thing and 4K footage through this thing in Final Cut Pro. I would invite you to peruse back through the last five or six videos on this channel and on my other channel to see the complexity of the videos I make. I'm not saying they're necessarily extra complex. I'm not making Marvel movies over here by any means, but I am in some cases using four cameras, all shooting 4K. And I have yet to need to bump down the playback quality for this to remain smooth during the edit. So if you make videos that look anything like these, I'm very happy to report that the M4 MacBook Air can very competently handle the editing of multi-cam 4K timelines with color grading, some lighting effects and animated titles, always in full resolution and never experiencing any editing discomfort. Not having a card reader included it is indeed an inconvenience, but really think about how many times in a given week you actually stick an SD card into the side of your machine. When I was shooting photos professionally, that happened a lot more often, but even then it was typically just once I got to my desk at the end of the day and I just use an anchor dongle, a minor inconvenience. It's also noticeably lighter in my bag, like to a surprising degree. When I'm in New York, I usually have to walk like, I don't know, maybe a half a mile in each direction from my hotel to the building I'm working in. And this laptop is a full pound lighter than the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Pro Max. And a pound doesn't seem like much, but when you also have a big backup battery in your bag, and for me, carrying a camera everywhere you go, the camera weighs about as much as a laptop itself, shaving off a pound makes a noticeable difference. I started playing Minecraft recently for the first time, totally normal thing for a middle-aged man to start doing. And I know this computer's not known as a gaming machine and it's not made for that, but you can crank the view distance all the way up. You can see the mountains so far into the distance. And let me tell you how easy it is to just kill a three hour flight and not even notice the time passing by when you're strip mining for diamonds at negative 54 Y value. Wired mouse on a plane, somebody stop me. I kind of thought the 16 gigs of RAM would be a problem at some point, but I'm learning an interesting thing about the more modern versions of Mac OS. And you may be about to learn something about RAM that you've never intended to when you clicked on this video. But newer and newer versions of Mac OS have been getting better and better and faster at RAM compression. Mac OS can compress your RAM at a ratio of 1.5 to 2X the RAM that you're not actively using. So like if you've got Final Cut Pro, Photoshop and Lightroom all open, and then you click on some mail, look up something on Safari and ask ChatGPT a question, and you're doing all of that on a 16 gigabyte M4 MacBook Air, you should run out of RAM. You should be hitting the swap. Like doing the same thing on my MacBook Pro that has 36 gigabytes of RAM, it'll actively be using like 24 gigabytes. With the Air, when you would otherwise run out of RAM, when you switch away from using Photoshop to start talking to ChatGPT for a minute, Mac OS will package up the RAM Photoshop is holding, like a zip file, and it can do this at a speed of up to 20 
20 gigabytes per second. And like I said, up to a two to one ratio and then just decompress it again once you switch back to using Photoshop, which results in you never hitting the swap. Swap is the point where your computer starts slowing down noticeably. The memory bandwidth, which is the speed of uncompressed RAM is 120 gigabytes per second with this computer. It can compress and decompress RAM at a rate of 20 gigabytes per second. So quite a bit slower, but still five times faster than using your SSD, which is what your computer does when it completely runs out of RAM and has to use the swap. At that point, you're using your computer's SSD as RAM. Then that swap, that SSD RAM is running at a speed of closer to four gigabytes per second, which is 30 times slower than RAM. This was previously more common when someone usually Grace would have like 40 Chrome tabs open. But more recent versions of macOS will prioritize compression and purging cached memory before switching to the swap. So as long as any individual program isn't asking for more than like 13 gigs of RAM on your M4 MacBook Air, you'll never actually feel it slowing down, even with a whole bunch of things open. And video editing, well, with Final Cut Pro at least, and the way I use it, does not use that much RAM ever surprisingly. If you have a ton of RAM in your computer, Final Cut Pro will use more of it. So if you have like 36 gigs of RAM, like I do in my MacBook Pro, and then you look at your activity monitor, you might think, oh man, Final Cut uses tons of RAM because it might have like 20 gigs used, but it just will use more if you give it more. But it can seemingly run equally smooth with less. Thanks, RAM compression. So now with the improved memory bandwidth and compression algorithms of the new Mac OS, a 16 gigabyte base model M4 MacBook Air can kind of act like a 24 gigabyte model or even a 32 gigabyte model with that two to one compression ratio, it can kind of act like how those used to act before running into swap. That may have all been very confusing, but it was also very true. And that's important on the internet. I have essentially everything I use running on this computer right now. And it's technically not running out of RAM. I am impressed. I want to need the MacBook Pro. I'm not pointlessly pushing the MacBook Air. I don't want to be satisfied with the MacBook Air. Just wanna make sure that that's clear. You see these dings? Whew, that was a close one, fell off a table. The RAM's bandwidth on the M4 Air is indeed slower than the M4 Pro and a lot slower than the memory bandwidth on the M4 Max. Like this is four times slower memory bandwidth than this. But fun fact, nothing I do on computers, it turns out, is affected by that particular metric. So if what I've been describing on this video is similar to the way you use a computer, you don't need to care about that number either. Teams, Outlook, AutoCAD, Excel sheets, even video editing and photo editing. These things are not slowed noticeably by the more limited RAM throughput. I'll bet exports are slowed down to some degree by that, but they're still really fast. Now, if you use Blender or try to run LLMs locally on your computer, this is not the computer for you. Although you can go up to 32 gigs of RAM on this thing. Another important caveat, if you are a video editor and you shoot in 60 frames per second, all the math changes. This thing can totally handle two streams of simultaneous 4K 60, but four angles will overwhelm its more limited media engines. That said, just switch it to better performance instead of better quality and you're still able to rip right on through those. <laughs> What's up? Did you dress? This is your Apple Watch charger. Mine's behind the bed and I can't unplug it and I <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Always keep an Apple Watch charger in your desk. Numbers and figures aside, as someone who has literally always gotten the MacBook Pro instead of the base model over the last 20 years, I am super impressed and super surprised at how this thing feels essentially just like my M4 Max MacBook Pro, a $3,500 computer. Like sure, if you set these side by side, the 120 hertz screen of the MacBook Pro stands out. But using this without that for five minutes and I don't notice anymore. I routinely have AutoCAD, Outlook, but also Apple Mail and Teams and ChatGPT in a browser window open all day long. Or Final Cut, Photoshop, and Lightroom open together with a web browser when I'm double dipping here at my salary job. And unlike laptops of the days of yore, this thing is always running super snappy. Like always. Thanks, RAM compression. Like you can overwhelm it. You just have to do things that you wouldn't normally do. You have to try pretty hard. I'm being honest right now when I say I've been using this computer exclusively now for the last couple of months. Every day, doing my producer job and my creator job. Job, there's gonna need to be a significant change in how software operates over the next few years for this thing to start to feel dated. And I suppose one thing that could cause someone to need to upgrade from this laptop is if Apple intelligence ever actually makes its way locally onto the computer. So it can do cool ChatGPT type stuff with Siri. But even when they do release that, my guess is at least at first, that's all gonna function on the cloud anyway. I know the local LLM stuff just takes a ton of resources, but I also know Apple is a ways off from getting those running locally. This laptop kicks ass. If you're a creator, you can get by with the M4 MacBook Air. The end. Goodbye. Today it's Dutch Brothers. They just opened by my house and actually they're a really good coffee.